Hello everyone, this is John Eric, your Verbling teacher from New York City, hanging out today from Lisbon, Portugal, and inviting you to join us in another in the Talkaholic Texts series, this time number 12. Uh, uh, this class is going to be pretty interesting. Last week I tr decided to try to link all the text together in a thematic way, so we're going to try this this week as well. If you don't know me, here are three quick rules to help you in my class. Hopefully all you viewers out there will come in the classroom. Turn off your microphones when you come in. That's the turn off. Tune in means pay attention to the new words and try to use them as actively as possible throughout the class. A word about that in just a moment. And finally, open up. You can feel safe to practice your English here, so be open. And the more open you are, the more I can help you out and give you my suggestions. And that will help you learn. Um, let's say a quick hello to Mr. Franz. We've got Nihan. Hello, Nihan. But we're going to say a quick Hi. hello to Mr. Franz, because I don't think I know you, Mr. Franz. Where are you from? Make sure you turn on your microphone, Franz. Your microphone is on the upper right side. There okay, you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Where are you from, Franz? Italy, Milan. You're from Milano. Okay, yes. excellent. I haven't Franz, been there in a long time, but I remember this is it well. my, <laughs> This is my first time in a verbal class. Ah, excellent, excellent. And um, uh, when you come to class, in order to get a spot, you can use a ticket. That's the new system where you can reserve. Or if you're new, you automatically get a reservation. Uh, so just so you know. Um, so you can reserve in advance using the ticket system. And Franz, if you don't know how to do that, just look at the top of the Verbling window where it says Get Tickets, right? And you click on there, and you've got a variety of ways to get tickets. In other words, reserve a spot. This is a new thing. It started today, but it's just like the reservation system, okay? Just so you know. Well, nice to have you in class. And I'm going to say hello to some other people that I, well, we know, we know Nihan and we know Hazel. These are our returning champions. But we're going to say a quick hello to Nicholas Alvarez. Hello, Nicholas. How are you? Hi, teacher. I'm good. Thank you. And you? Excellent. I'm great. And where are you from, Nicholas? I am from Argentina. From Argentina. Okay. Yes. Thanks for joining us. And we're going to say a quick hello to Arnaud. Hello, Miss Monsieur Arnaud. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Hello, John. And where are you from, Arnaud? I'm from France. France is a big country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where in France, if you don't mind me asking? In the north, in the south, in the middle? Ah, uh, France. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you serious? <laughs> I'm just curious where in France you're from. Uh, France is it's in the north. No? No, no, no. Where are you from in France? I ah, know. Paris. France. Sorry, <laughs> Paris. Ah, yes. I used to live in Place de Victoire. I used ah. to live in the right bank of France. Uh -huh. That's sure. how I know where it is, because I used to live there. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us, Arno. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you. OK. And, and I think we've got one more hello, two more hellos to say before we begin. Ah, we've got Mario back. Hi, Mario. Nice to see you again. And Yosef, Hi. thanks for joining us. All right. So I think I've said, oh, and sorry, one more. Um, Haba, Haba Mohammed. Turn on your microphone. Just say a quick hello to the group. Haba, Haba Mohammed. Haba, which is next to Franz and, in, and next to Hazel in the middle. Haba, hello, Haba. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you're having trouble with ah, there we go. I hear the microphone being plugged in right now. When you get your mic working, say hello. Okay. Oh, and and Jami Cabrales. Am I saying that right? Jami or Hami? Turn on your microphone, Hello. Mr. Cabrales. Mm, we've got lots of new people today who don't know. Listen, I'm going to share my screen. Just take a quick look. 
your microphone is over here on the right side and when it's gray you can speak and if I turn it red look what happens okay and now I'm turning it gray again so you can see when it's red we can't hear you okay so I'd like to say just to the people who joined us a little late first Haba quick hello to Haba I hear your microphone is working now hello Hi. can you hear me excellent now I can hear you okay and wh where are you from Haba uh, I'm from Alexandria Egypt from Egypt okay excellent by the way just so you know oh I'm getting feedback from somebody Mr. Cabrales, can you hear me? Mr. Cabrales, wait, don't mute him because I'm trying to get him to turn off to close his verbling window. Hami or Yami, I don't know how to say your name. Turn on your microphone, please. Okay, well, <laughs> when you get your microphone working, we're going to talk to you. And Haba, can you move the microphone away, get a little farther away from your mouth because we're, we're getting your breathing, okay? So just move it a little bit away, like up like this. Okay, Haba? Okay, is this okay? Yeah, yeah, much better. Okay, listen, everyone. This is an advanced class. That means that the text we're going to read is for a native speaker. You might find it difficult, but don't worry. Uh, the debate that we're going to have, I think anyone can participate in and give ideas. Um, but the idea here is to read the text, learn some skills, to how to decipher the text, how to learn new words, try to use those in the debate, and hopefully this text will be something that you want to talk about. I try to pick things that we can really talk about that affect everyone. I'm trying something new with this series, which is every week to pick a theme and to examine that theme from different points of view. Uh, so you'll see in a moment what we're going to talk about. So um, what else do I want to say? That, that's basically it. Oh, and if you haven't been in the class before, what we try to do is spend the first half reading, learning new vocabulary, and in the second half um, we will debate it or do some kind of activity where, it, where we're speaking and hopefully using that vocabulary. And by the way, Ida, uh, if you had a reservation, just hang out because if anyone leaves, you'll be the next to go. Um, make sure that you, what was I going to say, just in case you're you're used to the reservation system. Reservations are now called tickets, but it's basically the same thing. Okay, just so you know. <clears throat> and Ida, I don't know, but if you send me a message on Facebook or Google Plus, maybe I can help you, but I can't do it right now. Okay? So just let me know what the problem was and I'll try to help. Okay, so just everyone. So sorry. Yes. Uh, you said something uh, at the beginning of the class, uh, and uh, sorry, I couldn't catch. What about tic tickets? What's the meaning of uh, ticket? What's the relation of ticket and reservation, the new thing? It's the new name for reservations. Same thing, new name. Oh, okay, okay. There, there's going to be uh, maybe less, I don't know, less... Uh, there's going to be some new restriction. I think, for uh, for maybe you have to. I I, I don't know. It's brand new. I, I have just saw the, uh, the 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 news today. Okay, Something okay. will be slightly different, but basically it will function the same way. If you're not a premium member, just mm -hmm. send some invitations to friends, and for every invitation you send, you get a spot in class or any of those things that you see there. But basically, it's the same as a reservation for all intents and purposes. Okay, thank you. Okay, listen, everyone. Before we read. I'd like to share something with you. I want you to tell me uh, about this interesting piece of news. I'd like you to tell me where this is happening. You're going to read this on my screen in just a moment. Um, and what you think is happening and any other opinion you may have about it. Okay, I'm just going to share this little bit of text. Give me a second. And hopefully you'll be all be able to see it. So, whoops. Let me go back to my. Give me a second. I gotta share my screen with you. Okay. Can everyone see that? No. 
No. <laughs> no. no. See you. <laughs> yes. No. How do I look? Good. <laughs> Very good. Yes. Great. Oh, great. Uh, let's see what went wrong. Hold on. Okay. How about now? No. Uh, now, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to read. I'm going to read a little bits and pieces of this of this news article. Just a few pieces, a few excerpts. We call these blurbs, by the way. B l u r b s. A blurb is an excerpt, a little piece. And I want you to tell me if you can figure out what happened, where it happened, when it happened, and what newspaper we're reading. Okay? These are some things to think about. Are you ready? Ready! Yeah. Yes! Yes! yes. Will, will you post it to the chat box? Uh, not, not this one, no. I didn't post this one. Okay. I'm just going to read some excerpts, some blurbs. Here we go. You can follow along on the screen as well. The Pemberton Mills in Lawrence. In this state, employing between five and six hundred operatives fell this afternoon about five o'clock burying nearly every person in the ruins the mangled bodies are being taken out by the cartload it is supposed that over two hundred were instantly were killed instantly okay there's your first excerpt just from that one little blurb which is two sentences long one two three sentences long can you tell me what happened, where it happened, what newspaper we're reading, oh, and when it happened. What, when, where. You know those journalistic questions, right? Who, what, when, where, how. Can you, how many of those can you answer from this one little blurb of text? An accident in, uh, in U.S., in Lawrence. Yeah. Speaking three sentences. An accident happened in the U.S. in Lawrence, okay? Yes, uh, and uh, about uh, five to six hundred people died instantly. They were buried when uh, the factory collapsed, I think. Okay, so far so good. Uh, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to, we're going to have to mute you, Hamib, or I don't know how to say him, Jamie, because we're getting a lot of noise on your end. But you can turn on your mic when you're ready to speak. Okay, we're going to keep it off for now. Okay. Um, so that's what did we answer so far? That was the that was the what happened, and the yeah. where. And, and when what? January ten at five o'clock. How do you know that? <laughs> it was written there. I know, <laughs> but no, don't worry <laughs> about what's written. Don't that's worry why. about what's written. <laughs> I want I want you to answer this in a in a slightly more broad way. Maybe I could ask Arno. Okay. When do you think this happened? Don't worry about the time of day, but more generally, when do you think this happened? Based on the type of English that you just heard and read. Uh, in the past. Arno, what do you think? Make sure you turn on your microphone, Arno. Uh, it's just a little bit tricky. Well, give an educated guess, and then we'll take a closer look. Tell me what your impression is. Uh. Do you think this happened today, last week, last year, 10 years ago, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago? <laughs> what do you think and why? Just make a guess. Don't think too hard, okay? Uh, uh, one week ago. Okay. okay, let's go with one week ago. Anything in the text made you think that? By the way, I would have guessed the same thing, just so you know. <laughs> I would have guessed the exact same thing. What made you think it might be a week ago? Because, teacher, it seemed like, because it occurred to me, <laughs> anything in particular made you think that, Arno? Oh, you're thinking way too much. Arno, you're thinking way too much. <laughs> you have got to give a knee-jerk reaction, because I'm trying to trick you. 
All right. Can I? Uh, do you have anything else you want to add? If not, I'm going to ask some other people. Anything in particular you want to add about why you thought that, Mr. Arno? If not, let me go to the group. So, sorry? Do you want to share why you think it's a week ago? Um, or is it just some impression you have? No, it's just some impression I have. Yeah, okay, okay. The first time I read it, I would have thought it's a week ago as well, but I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, maybe, Nicholas, um, we have those WH questions. Let's try to answer one more. Um, which, so we've got the what happened. First of all, what's your opinion about when it happened? Do you think it happened a week ago, Nicholas? Um, yes, I, I think that yes, because uh, there is no specific day in the, mm -hmm. in the, fir, in the first paragraph. Right, only right. Says, only says 5 o'clock. Right, right. So maybe for that, uh, I guess, or I think that is okay. uh, not, not much time before. I agree. The first time I read it, I could have said a week ago. Does anyone else think it happened a week ago? No. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Let me share with you why I think it happened a week ago, because I've been following the news and something happened like this a week ago and two weeks ago. Uh, so that's why I linked together this reporting with the other reporting. That's why I thought it was. Um, who doesn't think it happened a week ago? Me. Why? Uh, because uh, the writing seemed uh, old, in an old style. Bingo! <laughs> Bingo means yes. Hazel? Uh, are you laughing at me? <laughs> I'm laughing with you. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm not laughing <laughs> at all. I, I was blocked. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I said, bingo. Bingo. You got it. Okay. <laughs> you got it. The style of the writing shows mm. us that it's not recent. Okay. Let's look a little bit more at the style. The class is not about the style, but since you, got, you were the one who picked this up, let's look a little more closely at the style. First of all, I'm going to share my screen again. I think it's 1900 something. Interesting. Before we look at it, let's look at it again. But before we do, what makes you think it's 100 years ago? Because it uh, looked like a factory, and a factory doesn't collapse and um, kill all the people in this day, I think, in US at least. Maybe in an... Uh, um, very remote African or Asian country, but not in the U.S. Interesting answer. Very interesting. <laughs> Does anyone think that factories don't collapse in the U.S. in this day and age? <laughs> Does anyone and think they do? And to kill the whole, uh, the whole uh, workers. Yes, and to kill everyone there, yes. yes. What Fish. happened about a week and a half ago in the U.S.? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Almost. Ah, with, ah, with, Bo with Boston? With, uh, no, 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 after Boston, after Boston. W let, let's look at the English a little more closely, okay? Let's look a little more closely. I'm going to see if I can just skip down to another detail. Um, and also we'll get the sense of why this happened a long time ago. So am uh, I right or not? Uh, yes, you're basically okay. right, yes. Okay. Hang on a second. Let me go to. Okay, I'm going to go to the, the end of the article. Maybe that's a good place. Hold on a second. Um, give me a second. Let me find. Mm, okay, let's let's pick this. So this is not five o'clock. This is twelve o'clock midnight. Okay, and it's written on the page. What does that tell you? If it's written on the page. <laughs> Now they are. They don't read it on the page at the midnight. They write only online, I suppose. News. Absolutely, there was no internet at the time, yes. so they've got to write directly on the page, and it tells you something else because the beginning of the article happened at five o'clock, the end of the article happened at midnight. 
what does that mean? It means that they are printing newspapers throughout the day, right? To give, what do we call that when we want to tell what's going on and we want to refresh the story, so to speak? Anyone? 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 Going once, going twice. Did I hear update? Can you, can update. You <laughs> I, 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 did I hear update? Excellent. Nicholas, <laughs> did you say update? Nicholas, you are absolutely right. Thank you. Yes. Update. Yeah. <laughs> They're updating the newspaper throughout the day. So that's another way we know it's not recent. Uh, okay. Look, one more excerpt. And let's look at the style, and then we're going to. I'm going to share an article with you and talk about how this relates. To, we'll, we'll look at when this happened in just a second. Calamity succeeds. Oh, wait. Can you see my screen? I'm sorry. Hold on. No. 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 Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Calamity succeeds calamity. In 10 minutes, the whole mass of ruins has become one sheet of flame. The screams and moanings of poor buried creatures can be distinctly heard but no power can save them. The flames threaten the destruction of the Washington Mills and the bridge over the river. Actually, that's the ending. That's the last update. Okay, does anyone want to give a, a date? Anyone want to give a date for the story, just to take a guess? Hello? Anyone? Anyone? Hello? Hello? What happened to Hazel and Nihan? Who said it was 100 I mean, years ago? I, I'm here. Want to give a date? What year would you say? Let's find out if you're right. I said uh, I don't know. In the, in the beginning of the... Wait, Hazel, Hazel, say that again. I'm sorry. Uh, 1900s. I wrote it in, on the oh, chat box. Oh, I can't see the chat box because oh, I'm sharing my screen. Sorry. Now, now I can see it. Okay, anyone else want to give a date? So 1900? Anyone else? No other guesses? 1920, 1930. That's Hazel and Nehan are the only one guessing, really? Okay. <laughs> Mario, would you agree or disagree that this is from the turn of the century? Mario, what do you think? It's, uh, this is the old events, but I, don't, I can't uh, say what, uh, when in, uh, it's happened. Okay, you can't say exactly when it's happening. Yeah. Okay, all right. And Yosef, do you want to venture a guess as to the date? What do you think, Yosef? Well, um, I cannot be sure, but uh, of course it's not recent. Uh -huh. it's like you can't be sure, but what would you imagine? Um... Would you do you agree or disagree with with Hazel? I even don't think so. It's a hundred years ago. It's, it's it might be less than that, maybe fifty, maybe forty years ago. Fifty or forty years ago. Okay, because, well, why? You might be right, but why? Why do you think so? Because what happened fifty or forty years ago that made you think this? The people have died. Well, Yosef, finish your idea first, because? Well, <laughs> I cannot be sure, but I, I was like trying to read through the article, but mm -hmm. and, um, I don't know, it just seems to be like that. Okay. It's good if you can look for clues in the text or even on the page. I'm sorry, and Nihan, I think you were speaking. I just said uh, some operatives, somebody died nearly... 200 people died. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, and? Yes, yes, I'm with you. And what uh, does that tell you? And I don't know. You said a very does important he say, word. Did he say something about the video or something like that? They said, I'm sorry, Haber, they said something about. The page or something. About the page? The veg, veg. Vegetables? Veg? No. R write the word. I'm sorry, because I'm, 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 I can't hear you. Bridge. I think oh, bridge. 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 I'm sorry. Bridge. Okay. Well, I think something that Nihan said was really good. She said, operatives died. 
operatives. Do we say that in English? Operatives? What is an operative? Workers. 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 I'm sorry. Hang on just a second. A little technical problem. Sorry. Okay. My fault. Workers Work. is right. That's what it means. Right? We don't say operatives unless we're talking about the CIA or the National Security Agency or the mm -hmm. FBI. Those are operatives. So that already tells you this is an old article. I'm going to share my screen and the mystery will be solved. Give me a minute. I'm curious. Take a look. Why don't you read the title for us? Ms. Curious, read the title for us. <laughs> Horrible calamity, falling of the Pembleton Mills at Lawrence, Massachusetts. 500 persons in the ruins, 200 operative, operatives killed, 150 wounded. The ruins on fire, probably 100 persons burned to death. And Look at the date. January 100, uh, 1850? 1860. 1860. 1860, so it's not... I was right. <laughs> Who's I was close. <laughs> Who said that? Yosef, did you say you were right? <laughs> Who, who said he was right? You said it was 50 years ago. Yeah, you said it was 50 it's years ago. <laughs> it's I 150 said 100. years ago. I said 100. I was closer. <laughs> it's almost 200 years ago. What year is it? Isn't it? What year is it now? It's 2060, isn't it? No, it's, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but, but it's, it's 150 years ago. It's difficult to find ago. the clothes. I mean, I mean, it's difficult to find clothes. Uh, but when it happens. It's, it, it's, I'm sorry, it's a little hard to hear you, Yosef. It's difficult to find what? Uh, to, to find a hint. Or, uh, a hint. A hint, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, what Nihan pointed out about operatives, that was a big hint, right? Because we don't say that in English. So this is also to show you how the English language has changed a little bit. We don't have operatives, we have workers because that is a word that comes directly from Latin and we don't use those Latin expressions the way we would have in the past. Um, the fact that there's updates throughout the story already shows you that this was before the internet and even television, right? You had to rely on telegraph and the printing press and that's all you had. Well, they did pretty well with those two things. And then this other thing, horrible calamity, all of this description. I don't know, it just doesn't sound like a modern story because we, we're, we're more concerned with facts. Or at least it needs to sound like facts. At least it needs to sound that way. It needs to sound factual. Here there's lots of description, lots of emotion. And we, you know, I, I suppose we wouldn't have that anymore because we have images now. So we don't need to be told how to feel. We just watch it and feel it or watch it and don't feel it. I mean, it depends. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, so, this week we're going to be talking about who has responsibility for this kind of, these kind of safety issues. Who's really responsible? Who should be? So what I'd like to do today is to read the first article in the series, which is an article that mentions this article from 1860. So that's why I thought it would be interesting to look at the original. We're going to read it. It's an op-ed. It's short. For anyone who's coming here for the first time, what is an op-ed? What's the difference between an op-ed and a regular news story? Anyone know? Nicholas, you're raising your hand. Good. <laughs> Nicholas has got all the answers today. Earlier he talked about update, and now he's raising his hand. Only my hair. Only my hand, but I don't have ideas. I don't have ah, okay. <laughs> Well, I think, I think that um, someone else must know what the difference is between an op-ed and a regular story. Op-ed stands for two words. Op is... It's up. Not up. Op. <laughs> O-P. And ed stands for... No? Really? <laughs> op, op is opinion. Ed is editorial. Op is... Ed opinions and editorials, not the front page of the newspaper, probably somewhere in the middle towards the end of the newspaper. Right? You with me so far? Clear? Yeah. Is, yeah? Yeah. 
Okay, because if I don't get feedback, then I don't know if anyone is following or if you're all sleeping. I don't know what's happening out there. <laughs> okay, so listen, we're going to read this op-ed that mentions this calamity. By the way, a quick hello to uh, Mentor. Am I saying your name right? Mentor Lacage. Oh, hi. Hi. Is it Mentor? Is that right? Yeah, it's Mentor. Mentor, where are you from? Guest. Try to guess. Uh, New Jersey. Am I right? <laughs> Near Camden? Near Camden? Why, New Jersey? Why New Jersey? Why? Because he told me to guess. So. <laughs> it's Because yes. uh, weren't you on that reality show, you and Snooky and Jay Wow? No, no. Someone else. I'm sorry. Someone else. With a, with a name like Mentor, I imagine you're part of a university and you're a mentor. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, but, you, you know, my name, I'm from Kosovo, you know? Kosovo, okay. Yes, from Balkan Peninsula. Uh, we invaded you, I remember. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very sorry about that, by the way. It yeah. wasn't my fault, but I'm sorry anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my name has to do with the Greece, old Greece. Before. Right, 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 right. So it's and like... I'm working at the university as a lecturer. Ah, okay. That's why you're a mentor. What, what, yeah. what, what, what do we call you? I'm man, my name is Mentor, you know. Oh, so you're a mentor and your name is Mentor. Yes. Wow. Your mother was a visionary. She knew exactly what <laughs> Unfortunately, didn't my mother give me a name? It's somebody. <laughs> well, Mr. Mentor, yeah. we're, we're going to, we're, we're, we just got finished discussing um, a little bit about style and how to tell if an article is recent or old. And now we're going to get to the meat of the lesson. We're going to actually read um, an op-ed. And if you don't have the the link, I'm going to give it to you right now in the window. Oh. It's it's there in the verb link chat you are window. So great teachers, because I will follow you from the beginning. I'm sorry, you are so great. Oh, okay. Well, please do next time. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when you're teaching, and I'll follow you. Okay. <laughs> so everyone, make sure you've got the document open. Talkaholic text series number twelve, clothed in misery. I haven't done anything with this article, right? Because what we're going to do is come back to it several times throughout sure. the week. Yep. May I ask you? Do you hear me well? Yeah, you sound perfect. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, wait, very good. Where are you from? I'm 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 American, but I'm yeah. living in Europe. So I'm in Portugal, but I'm from New York. Oh, we are. You are my neighbor here. Okay. Something like that. Not too Sorry far. I disturb you. Interrupt you. Okay. So listen. Let's all take a turn reading one, reading a paragraph and try to discover some new vocabulary. And then if we have time, we'll begin the debate. Well, at least we'll try to get some ideas about that. For me, the overall question is who's responsible and who should be responsible. I chose that little excerpt in the beginning of class from 1860 because it reminded me of what happened a week and a half ago in, does anyone know what I'm talking about in the States? It's not, uh, Hazel, you were mentioning Boston, but I was saying it's it's not what happened in Boston, but it happened at the same time as Boston. It's in Texas. Texas. In Texas. Yeah. By the way, how do we say your name? Is it Hami? How do no, I pronounce Jamie. Jamie. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, Jamie, because I, <laughs> I don't know what part of the world you're from, so I don't know how to pronounce the J. Where are you from, Jamie? I'm um, from the United States, but I'm living in Yemen. Okay, and you're from United Emirates. No, no, I'm from the United States, but I'm living the, in Yemen. You're from the United States. Yeah. You do, you do know this is an English class, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, but I'm trying to practice English because I haven't practiced for a long time. Ah, okay, okay. Can I ask? Do you mind if I ask you? Have you been out of the states for a long time? I've been for I've been out of the United States for about fifteen years or fourteen years. So it's uh, a long me too. Time. Wow, me yeah. too. But you sound more American than I do. I think. Okay. <laughs> so who is the teacher here? I I'm the teacher, but but I think my my accent has gotten a little bit strange over the years. He sounds he sounds pretty American to me. What do you think? All right, listen, we're all going to take a turn and we're going to deal with, we're going to make sure that we understand it. I'm going to try to 
highlight important vocabulary words, especially if you have trouble with them, and then at the end we're going to start our debate. But this is going to continue over to tomorrow's class. Same, same class every day this week, and different texts, different activities, different points of views. Who wants to get us started? Nicholas, you're raising your hand? Me. Excellent. Me. <laughs> Who I? said me? Me. No, no, you're second. Nicholas raised his hand. <laughs> okay. Nicholas, start okay. us off. First I paragraph. Say, but you don't see me. I was the first one. I can't see you, but I can see Nicholas and his hair. But you he must was touching me. his hair. You must trust me. I never lie. I trust you, but you've got to shut up and let Nicholas read. <laughs> <laughs> You're second. Nicholas, go ahead. Yes. Uh, the collapse last year, last Wednesday, of a Bangladeshi factory complex, the latest deadliest, deadliest chapter in the history of misery level. Wait a second. It doesn't say history, it says story. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Of miserable labor condition in the international government industry must must seem distant to many Americans. Yeah, not to me or Jamie, but to most Americans, because we're <laughs> it's not distant to us. Okay, keep going. Um, their tragedy is not ours because they they working to conditions and construction regulation are not. Hours, but the story of manufacturing half a work away is as close as the lighter cotton cloth that swaddles us. Good, keep going. It, it is as intimate, intimate to our private, 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 uh, private interest as our boxers are. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> Go ahead. Stitched uh, in those bunkers by hands we never see and rarely consider. Okay, excellent. Just a few pronunciation issues. Um, the past, the ED in the past will change. There's three different ways to pronounce it. So the word stitch in the past would be uh -huh. stitched, like a T, stitched. Okay? Stitched. Good. Yes. Okay, and swaddles. It should be swadless, but it's not pronounced swadless. It's spelled that way, but it's pronounced swaddle, as if it was D E L S, not D L E S. Swaddles. Okay, some some vocabulary here that's difficult. To stitch. Give me a synonym. Anyone in the group? Uh, you, like in operations, when uh, do stitches or um, when you do stitches, you are. Good. In an operation, you're doing what to the skin? You're doing so, what? Sewing. Sewing. Yes. <laughs> Stitching is to sew. What are boxers? Is that this? Boxers? Under. Uh, under your. <laughs> pants. <laughs> under your pants are your boxers. <laughs> right. If they're loose, they're boxers. If they're tight, they're called something else. The briefs, if they're tighter. Yes. Okay? These are for dudes, usually. <laughs> women, women can wear them too, but they're usually for men. Okay. <laughs> yes. And they're called boxers because they look like the shorts you wear when you're boxing. They look like shorts, like you'd wear in the boxing ring. That's why they're called boxers. Swaddle. Anyone know what that means? Mm -hmm. Swaddle. I think when you wrap a baby. Right. You That's you from swaddle. the Bible. Directly out of the Bible. And lo, Moses was wrapped in swaddling clothes yes, exactly. and slipped down the Nile River. Right, right, right. So it's, it's, uh, it's yes, wrapping, wrapping, like as if with some kind of material, wrapping. Okay, and here it makes sense because we're talking about clothing, so it makes sense. So could you quickly read that sentence and replace swaddle with another word? Use wrap or any word that sounds good. I think that was you. Wrap us, wrap us. So the whole sentence then, as close as. Uh, that. Uh, uh, but the story of manufacturing, half a world away. Uh, First paragraph. Yes, in the middle. half a, a world away is a, as close as the light cotton clothes that um, wrap us. Uh, wouldn't use wrap in that way, but right idea. Say it in a more plain English way. 
the clothes that what? What are we doing? Cover us. Cover us. Cover us. Good. That's it. Swaddle here means to be covered in clothing. Okay. All right. So we're going to read through this text. I've just put some words in bold. These were mostly pronunciation. Oh, by the way, garment industry. What does the garment industry produce? Clothing. Articles clothing. of clothing. Articles of clothing are also called garments. Mm -hmm. Just so you know. Articles of clothing and garments. Okay, Mr. Mentor, where are you? Here I am. Excellent. Can you do the second one for us? No. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> okay, Hazel? No, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Mentor. Okay. Similar disasters happened here in the first fa phase of all national industrial industrialization, the 1878 Washburn Mill explosion in Minneapolis. The Minneapolis, by the way, Minneapolis. Minneapolis. The Good. 1905 Grover Show factory disaster in Brockton, Mass. The 1911 Triangle Waste Shirt. shirt. Waste Shirt. We shirt. don't say that anymore, but that means T-shirt. It's an old way of saying T-shirt. Oh, really? Yeah, like shirt a shirt. Waist. waist Shirt. No, here it is a shirt waist. It is written shirt waist. Yeah, because I'm reading it backwards on my oh, screen. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so it's, it's a typo, <laughs> or you read <laughs> No, it's an old word. It's an old way of saying it, but I'm reading it backwards. It's That's from why. Shakespeare's. No, it's not from Shakespeare. Uh, uh, actually, fire. Yep. Manhattan. But back when New England textile mills were the textile mills were the beating heart of America's mass production. Infancy, the most no, notorious, how, how do you pronounce? Notorious. Notorious was the 1860 collapse of the Pemberton Mill in Lawrence, Mass. The upper floors of the Pemberton building were supported by cheap iron columns. Late on a Tuesday afternoon, Jan 10. January 10th. Oh my gosh. January right? 10th to many of the Webbing machines fell into rhythm. Everything began to shudder and the building tore itself apart. The columns cracked, the floors splayed, the walls bulked, and then burst out wall. And a hideous cataract Good. of timber Good. men, women, men, women, walking children, and iron machines collapsed into a heap of blood and crushing tonnage. Okay, so you've got a lot of good vocabulary words there. Um, let's just make sure we know what, what, what happened. Could you just, uh, Mentor, could you just summarize this in plain English, simple plain English? What happened? What are they describing for us? Oh my gosh, while I was reading, I could have concentrated in ah. Or oh, oh, we'll come back to you in just a moment. You okay. think about it. Read through it again quickly. Yeah, let me scan a little bit, okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. And so uh, this is the, the excerpt I was reading to you in the beginning from 1860. This is what they're referring to. Um, again, there's a few, di there's some really difficult oh. words in here. Here uh, appears something, something disaster in the uh -huh. in, in right. national industrialization. Yeah. In... Um, in England. In England? No, not in England. No, America. No, in, in USA. In USA. Right, in Massachusetts. Mass yeah, yeah. is short for Massachusetts. Yeah, in USA, yeah. Okay. And, and how did it happen? Could you pick that up? Oh. How did it happen? Some explosion. Uh -huh. Because? Oh, some explosion. Heavy, heavy machines. Yeah. Iron. Heavy, heavy machines did what, Nihan? Um, the columns cannot uh, keep uh, could the, not could not could not keep the uh, the weight weight and the weight, uh, mm. the, weight and, uh, the columns uh, fell down uh, and uh, some kind of catastrophic event occurred. Well, the fact that it fell down was the catastrophic event, right? <laughs> That's a pretty big catastrophe, and you're right. Uh, the columns. Listen, how I say the same thing. The columns couldn't support the weight. 
They couldn't support the weight of the machines, right? Yeah. yeah. And why did it happen? Well, there may have been an explosion. It sounds like an explosion, but in fact, notice the middle of the text where it says... Cheap the, iron columns supported by cheap iron columns. Uh, no, no, no. A little bit after that. Too many of the weaving machines fell into rhythm. Weaving is like sewing, but it's a little different, right? Ooh, what is that noise? Mr. Alberto, I need to mute you because I'm getting lots of noise from your end. So you, you can turn your mic on when you're ready to speak, but for now, please keep it off. Uh, the machines fell into a rhythm. So what do you think happened to the structure of the building? If no one knows, I'm going to call on Nicholas. <laughs> what ha what happened with this with the structure of the building because of the rhythm of the machines? Uh, it began to shatter. Yeah, they began to it shatter. The but vibration. I don't know what is. Yeah. Uh, like 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 yeah. Okay. Try and, let's try to tore apart. You know. Absolutely, it began to shake apart. Yeah. Shudder, shudder is another way to say kind of do this, sway or shudder, move back and forth. Okay, excellent. Shake. Uh, or shake, yeah. So the rhythm of the machines caused the building to basically collapse because of the vibrations. Um, I think what we're going to do, because I don't want to run out of time, we're just going to read through the rest of the article. I'll stop for any questions. But I want to get the reading done today, and then we're going to come back to this text tomorrow. Plus, we have an activity <clears throat> as well. Uh, we're going to debate this, but we have an activity for it. So I'd like to maybe, um, who wants to go next? Maybe Nihan, could you do the third for us? Sure. <clears throat> mm. uh, with several, several hundred, yeah, several hundred people were trapped or dead in the wreckage. Men and women struggled across the ruins, pulling blood-stained workers out of the tangle. As darkness fell, someone's lantern ignited the oil ignited? ignited the oil and cotton dust in the air, and the bones of the building became an inferno with women still pinned inside. Driver Elizabeth Sturge, Stewart, uh, Phelps, Stewart, the writer Elizabeth Stewart, Stewart Phelps, a child at the time, remembered that the woman still trapped in the blaze tried to sing to keep up their courage. They were used to singing at their looms. Yeah, remember While, that this is a, a, a this is a textile mill, so they had looms. What do you do with a loom? And what now? Him, him, yeah. or oh, yeah, they sang hymns. But what is the purpose of a loom? What do you create? In, what do you make in a loom? Just so I know that you know what that you follow. You or anyone it doesn't matter. To courage they th themselves or yeah, but don't worry about the singing. What is a loom? A loom makes what? Anyone? To courage people know. or yeah, but I'm talking about loom. L O O M. Okay. <laughs> um, a loom. They use it, it's kind of, of tool to um, rhythm the uh, song or. No 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 no. It's a it's a big machine. Like, it, like it, knitting or something. Yeah, knitting. haba. That's it. Like knitting. It's a machine, but in this case, not knitting, but weaving, mm -hmm. which is a finer. Like it's more connected. It's closer together. So it's it's a finer knit. Knit can be loose, but a weave is more tight. Not more tight, tighter, I meant to say. Okay, just so you're clear, they were singing at their looms as a way to keep up the courage. Keep going. Nihan, please. Mild girls always Mild are. Girls. Mild, Mild, Mild girls always are, and their young souls took courage from the fam familiar sound of one another's voice. She voices. Voices. Don't forget, yes. Yeah. Okay, voices. She will recall. They sang the hymns and songs which they had learned in the schools and churches. Churches. Heaven is my home. Churches, sorry. Heaven is my home. 
Jesus, lover of my soul, and shall we get her at the river? Voice after voice dropped, the fire raced on. Right, voice after voice dropped, what does that mean? Uh, the voice uh, um, increased. Why, why did the voice drop? Not increase, stop. Died, stop. probably. Because they died. of fire. They, because they died in the fire. So there was an explosion, after all. There was an explosion. Does anyone, did anyone pick up why there was an explosion? Because the building collapsed because the machine exploded. Something like that. Yeah, there was something um, after the collapse. What was in the air? Dust. No. Dust. And the dust, the dust was flammable. What did you say, Nicholas? The dust was flammable? flammable yes. Right, Nicholas. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Right. The dust was flammable, and so th they didn't have electricity. They had lanterns at the time, holding a lantern with a candle. It lit the dust, and there was a big ignited. explosion. The lantern ignited. There, it ignited. Ignited, ignited. Yes. Okay. okay, remember, you, you have to ignite a lantern at night, because it's dark. Ignite night. Don't forget. Okay. okay. <laughs> but Let's, I don't know why I pronounced it wrongly. Uh, I think what we're going to do, I'm going to try to get through the article before class ends. And then what we're going to do is take the words in bold, and I'm going to give you some exercises to think about, uh, maybe, maybe overnight for tomorrow's class or in the beginning of class tomorrow. So let's see if we can just get through the reading first, and we'll pick up here uh, again tomorrow at the same time. So our fourth, let's go with, I think, who is reading? Nihan, so Hazel, in number four, please. Yes. In the end, 88 people died and 160 were seriously injured. As in the recent Bangladeshi manufacturing disasters, including one last November in Dhaka that killed at least 117 people, the dangers to workers had been pointed out in a routine inspection long before the disaster. The Pembleton Mills flimsy, flimsy. flimsy metal columns had been marked as unsafe for years. It had not been profitable to replace them. These Bangladeshi disasters do not merely share kinship with the Lawrence one, but a genealogy. They are part of a cyclical system that has governed the textile industry since it moved out of cottages and into mills. Yeah, let's, we're going to stop here and, uh, and have a little discussion. Um, and I think we're, uh, I'll have you read the rest of the text uh, for tomorrow. But let's look at this one line. They don't share a kinship, they share a genealogy. Um, who is my kin? Let's be clear about that. You know kindergarten? Relative. Kindergarten? Relative. Relatives, good, good. Kindergarten, for example, same root. Um, your relatives are your kin. Okay? Genealogy, what's that all about? It's a study yes, of. The same of thing. Genealogy. Genealogy. No, it's. Um, study of race? Study more of. Old. Too many people talking, I'm lost. Study of what? The phrase, you know, like a study of race or something. Of, of race, you said race. Yeah. Okay, one idea is race. Mentor, what were you saying? Science or, or study, you know. Where we come from. Of origin, okay. Origin, yes. Origin, okay. Family and tree. Family tree. And your family tree, right. So, well, you're all basically, you're, it's, it's all, well, race, I don't know. Race is only indirectly part of it. But yes, your origin. And we call this tracing your origin, tracing it. Yes. That's the term we would we use. Yes. Okay, and in a more local. Can, you, more, can you try to down this word tracing, please? Trace, yes. Tracing your origin like this in the chat window. Nice. Yes. And in a more in a more in the more recent uh, part of the genealogy, it's your family tree. Yes, right? Sure. Yeah. In the more recent part, the more local part is your family tree. Yeah. Okay. So these Bangladeshi disasters do not merely share a kinship with the Lawrence one, 
Someone say that to me in plain English so I know that you, you understand. What does that mean in plain English, simple English? These disasters in Bangladesh, they don't share merely a kinship. So what does that mean in plain don't English? Re don't resemble with the... Uh, they don't... They don't... Resemble? Yeah, but don't, don't lose the word merely. Merely means... At all. At all or just, right. They don't... They don't just, in this context, I'll go with just because I think it's clear. Mm -hmm. They don't just resemble um, what happened. What was it? They don't just resemble this. What 18th, happened with, at Lawrence? In Lawrence in 1860, right? But they share a genealogy. In other words, family tree. Family tree. Yeah. So w what's the idea here? Are they two unconnected events? Um, maybe no. Um, no. The owner is um, no. They are two uh, another um, events, but the conclusion, the uh, result is the same. Well, more than that, yeah, the result's the same, but more than the result, I think they're trying the to say the origin is the same. The origin. The origin is the same. Yeah, the 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 cause is the same, and remember, this is an op-ed. And so not a normal story. This is an opinion article. Why would we be talking about 1860 when we're, when we're talking in the news about an event that happened a week and a half ago in Bangladesh or uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago in Texas? Why, why talk about this in an op-ed? What's the person getting to? What do you think? Because in, in, in the in the this kind of industry, uh, the, the people who work in it uh, repeat always the same the 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 same the same uh, problems errors errors, errors okay errors yeah. yes. okay once uh, they uh, discover whose um, fault is yeah. the accident. And that brings us to the purpose of our class. We're learning English, but we want to discuss whose fault it fault. is. <laughs> whose fault is it? So, Nicholas, you said <clears throat> that the origin is that the workers are making the same errors throughout history. Not, not the workers. Oh, Maybe okay. The owners. The owners. owners. Maybe the owners. Right. Um, let's let's end on a quick point about what happened in Texas. There was an expl uh, actually uh, Jamie. What, can you summarize what happened in Texas? Because well, you were. I heard you that there was a uh, really big explosion in Texas, True. and uh, it was in a factory. But I didn't uh, follow the details. I just no, just know in general. So I don't right. know details no, but that, about it. That's the gist. There was a huge explosion. A lot of casualties. I don't remember the whole amount, but I think it was well over a hundred. Uh, and it was, I think, a fertilizer uh, factory. So that's very explosive material. Here's the thing: Why do you think it happened? Related to what we've read, what 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 would you imagine? You or anyone? It doesn't matter. Cheap what would you? Construction, um, cheap construction materials. Cheap construction. Okay, could have been cause of construction. Any negligence, other ideas? Negligence. Negligence could be okay. Any other ideas? Construction, negligence. Material. Material. What yes. do you mean, material? Uh, That's not, the type. Not, not quality. Uh, not quality. quality. Yeah, material. Cheap quality. Okay. Well, the answer is you're Inspections all. Inspections. Yes. Who said that? Me. Who said me. <laughs> Nihan. Who yeah. bad? Nihan, you are a genius. <laughs> Here's the reason. You're, you're all right. It was because of negligence. It was because of the material, the, the construction material. Construction yeah, material. you're absolutely right. The responsible uh, But wait, wait, wait. But, but wait, but Nihan is the one who hit the nail on the head. The inspection, the last inspection of that factory was in 1986 <laughs> <laughs> in the United States. Right, the, the you know the richest country, arguably no, not arguably, truthfully, the richest country on the planet that should not have that, that should not have these kind of problems, and not they did. 1986. So, 
it wasn't profitable somehow to put the suggestions into, and it's exactly like what we're reading here. Anyway, so there's a lot of parallels uh, between the past and the present. And one thing we should do this week is to see what has changed, what hasn't changed, and who's responsible. So I'll let you think about that. Hold on to this article. I'm going to add a little bit of vocabulary work for you to do, and I'd like you to read the rest of it, and I invite you all to come back tomorrow, and we're going to uh, debate the issues in it. So try to get a reservation if you can, same time tomorrow night, okay? And okay. Check, check later on. I'm going to add some vocabulary work to help you with the words in bold. So that's it for now. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time. Follow me on on Bye. Verbling to see my schedule. You'll get an email. And like me on Facebook, and I can communicate with you there and join Google+, and I can even send you little messages. Wouldn't that be nice, little messages for me? Okay. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.